Good afternoon again everyone. Today, me and the lovely Candice are back down in West Sussex and we are going to be attempting to wild camp up on Chanctonbury Ring, the mysterious hill fault that is up there. Now if you remember, if you've watched a few of the videos before, you may remember that we have been here before and my mate Will, who lives fairly close by, uh, turned up and joined us on his bike and it was a really bad thunder and lightning storm, lots of strong winds, heavy rain and well we did manage a wild camp but it wasn't quite yeah. up on the actual ring, the hill fault itself, it was sort of, it was on the high ground, it was in the woodlands, yeah as Candice is saying, just to kind of the left, to the left of it, we probably had about half a mile, three quarters yeah. of a mile tops, but the weather was so bad and it was pitch black that we kind of had to just sort of camp there and it wasn't great but we did it. So the aim of this video is to actually wild camp on the hill fault, so we're going to explore it, have a look around it, there's loads of history up there and stuff. You can see it for miles around, in fact when I was at Holmbury Hill, another hill fault in Surrey, the other day you could actually see the the tree ring of beech trees on the top of Changtonbury ring and that was quite a few miles away so it's a it's a well-known landmark this and there's a lot of mystery and mythology and stuff like that that surrounds it I think there's remains of a Roman temple or something up there like that as well there's there's it's not just sort of like the stone age and stuff an iron age there's sort of other periods of history if you get what I mean so it's going to be good it's a, a history lovers wild camp this one so we're looking forward to this one Candice wanted to do this one she wanted to complete it and mm -hmm. actually do it and so do I so as you can see we've got our gear on our backs got my Osprey Talon 44 Candice has got a usual rucksack we're going to get her a new rucksack though mm -hmm. soon She's borrowing my Jack Wolfskin Gosma 1 tent tonight, old Jackie, and I've got the Wild Country Helm 1 tent. So we wanted two bomb-proof little tents that could withstand any strong wind up there if the weather does turn a bit. But as far as we're aware, the weather's going to be absolutely brilliant. So it's gone 5 p.m. We're going to aim to get up there in probably an hour, yeah. I reckon and you know we'll, we'll therefore catch the sunset and have time to sort of have a look around that while it's still light so it's the cows <laughs> in the field so you know what i'm gonna say enough talking let's get walking Wish us luck. Chanctonbury Ring is a prehistoric hill fault atop Chanctonbury Hill on the South Downs on the border of the civil parishes of Washington and Whiston in West Sussex. A ridgeway, now part of the South Downs Way, runs along the hill it forms part of an ensemble of associated historical features created over a span of more than 2,000 years including round barrows dating from the Bronze Age to the Saxon periods and dikes dating from the Iron Age and Roman periods. Consisting of a roughly circular low earthen rampart surrounded by a ditch, Chanctonbury Ring is thought to date to the late Bronze Age or early Iron Age. The purpose of the structure is unknown, but it could have filled a variety of roles, including a defensive position, a cattle enclosure, or even a religious shrine. After a few centuries of usage, it was abandoned for about 500 years until it was reoccupied during the Roman period. Two Romano-British temples were built in the fort's interior, one of which may have been dedicated to a boar coal. After its final abandonment around the late 4th century AD, 
the hill fall remained unoccupied save for grazing cattle until a mid 18th century landowner planted a ring of beech trees around its perimeter to beautify the site. They became a famous local landmark until largely being destroyed in the Great Storm of 1987. Periodic replanting on a number of occasions to replace old or destroyed trees has afforded archaeologists the opportunity to carry out a series of excavations which have revealed much about the history of the site. Okay, so we've, we're walking around like the perimeter of the, the hill fault here and we've just bumped into two guys that are wild camping up here as well so we've been chatting to them and stuff and they're sort of been scouting out spots they just stopped back there I think they're they're planning on catching the sunset which is something we want to do as well in a minute but uh, they've sort of said about camping kind of on this sort of pathway in this bit not inside the, the ring itself because you haven't got a view of course but you are sheltered from the wind yeah, so we're going to see, see what happens, but the views are just, they're breathtaking, they're incredible, and it's just so odd this place, and just, it's the fact that it's a hill fault coupled with the fact that someone has planted this ring of beech trees around, it just adds something else to it. One of the guys back there, he said, oh, someone at work said they reckon there's ghosts up here. Apparently there is like loads of myths and legends surrounding the, the place, the devil. Apparently if you run backwards around the ring six times, I don't know if it's at midnight or something, I know if you run around the ring backwards six times apparently you summon the devil with a load of bollocks. <laughs> to be fair, if you, if you manage to do that, then you'd probably be so delirious you'd probably think you'd see the devil anyway so but what an incredible place so we're going to look for sort of somewhere to camp around this side of the yeah. the, the hill fault but we want a good view as well so uh, we're going to see it, it looks like the inside of the the ring is all stinging nettles and stuff like that although that's not stopping that's not stopping us or it's not stopping me anyway from going in there and having a, a little explore either later on tonight or tomorrow morning when I get up I want to get up and get the sunrise here definitely I'll set about 20 alarms if I have to because I'm a heavy sleeper <laughs> look at that though we found this little flat spot between two of the, the beech trees just off of the sort of down from the ring where Candice is and we've got this amazing view so the sea is the other side sort of over there you can just actually see the sea just over there but we're out of the wind a bit more from here and it's sort of slightly lower ground so we're sort of out of sight of anyone coming off of the footpath and stuff over there but we've got this incredible view and also because we didn't bring chairs again because we were trying to sort of cut cut the weight down a bit we've got this old fallen tree and it looks like someone's had a fire pit there and an orange be able to sort of sit on that and sort of cook there we've not got fire materials tonight because i wasn't sure about having a fire here I thought I'm not going to risk it we've got just gas meths stuff like that so yeah that could be like the cooking and eating area and then we'll probably try and pitch the tents in between the two trees here because everything else is sort of on a bit of a slope really so has to be expected it's a hill fault so I think yeah we should be sort of fine in this little spot here so we're going to start getting set up Okay, we've got my Wild Country Helm 1 set up for me and we've got my Jack Walson Gossamer 1 set up for Candice and we sort of had to go quite close to one another just because they were the only kind of flat level spots 
there everything else kind of as I say slopes away a bit here um, I think the other two guys have gone sort of round the other side or something they said right other side of this out to sea was really windy the sunset was amazing which I think we might have missed it was amazing but it was just too windy so they're going to try probably over there sort of thing we did offer to say like you could camp sort of in this area if this is suitable um, but I think they want a bit of their own space but look at the views we've got though the view is going to be spectacular in the morning as I say the centre of the fault is through those trees there the beech trees go around the edge yeah that's our view <laughs> brilliant we've seen two joggers four cyclists <laughs> and then we saw a Land Rover driving off over there which was a little bit worrying because uh, I think that's part of the farm or something but yeah we're not too sure about the the ownership of the hill fault and stuff but I'm pretty sure we're not really meant to be here but hey ho that's wild camping isn't it there are other people here as well yeah Anyways, right, we're going to get all the stuff set up inside the tents. I'm back to you, is it? That's quite low as well. Or well, it's probably because we're high up as well. It feels like it's low, anyway. Okay, we're going to get all the stuff set up inside the tents. Crack a cider open, enjoy the view. Cook dinner, I'm getting starving now. I think there's a little bit of rain on its way. We can actually see like a mist, like a rain cloud sort of yeah. coming towards us. It's quite eerie looking. Where we're this high up, you can just see it moving across across the, like, the landscape in front of us. I see blue lights over there. Someone's in trouble. Candice has uh, just cracked open. What, you cracked open? Nice. That means it's good. Thatcher's rosé, her favourite. Mm -hmm. Well done. Go on, go on girl and uh, she's from Tilbury you know right so I've got a Rosie's Pig flat tyre cloudy uh, sparkling rhubarb cider and I've also got an Alska cider with me tonight uh, this one is if I get to, there we go rhubarb and pink grapefruit vegan friendly apparently so I've got to decide which one to have first Candice what one should I have first? Uh, Rosie's pig Rosie's pig yeah? yeah okay mm -hmm. yep the rain has started yep. we could be tent bound for a little bit we'll see hopefully it's just passing Cheers everyone to a good camp. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, lovely. Brilliant side of that. 9.5 out of 10. Go on. As you can probably hear, the rain has started and it's coming down quite heavy. So we've had to get inside our respective tents. They're working just fine in the rain. I'm just sort of cooking in the the porch here. Got a bit of shelter from some of the trees, so I've not got the, the main door shut. I'll probably have to shut in a minute though, because the porch will start getting flooded. But um, the OEX Takana stove is working brilliantly. So yeah, we can't sit in our little spot where we were earlier. Hopefully though, it'll blow over, but you can see all the all the rain clouds it looks like we're actually inside the rain clouds up here it's pretty cool <laughs> I wonder how the other two guys are getting on hopefully they're all right mm. Candy sort of went to look for them briefly to see how they were getting on but she sort of came back once she started seeing the rain clouds but yeah hopefully they're all right maybe when it's past we'll sort of see how they're getting on right I think I have to batter down the ashes here this is brilliant! <laughs> Nutters! The 
rain has stopped but everything is sort of soaking around us really but all of our stuff's dry so it's time for an Alska rhubarb and pink grapefruit cider from Aldi's not bad good little combination there of of flavours they sit quite well together actually give that give that a 9.1 out of 10 some strong ciders tonight really good they both got rhubarb in but I'll, uh, I'll switch out my light and show you the surrounding view all the lights have come on down below now we can see someone in the fields down below us with like a really powerful like flashlight sort of moving around they look like they're searching for something like they've either lost something or they could be doing I don't know a bit of illegal hunting or something we're not really sure but they've been moving from field to field see all the lights around there as well we've had dinner I had a vegetable korma ration pack meal that was really nice actually I shared it with Candice because she's just got some tuna so but i've got like biscuits and cheese spread um, a cherry turnover which i had that was lovely i've had a cup of tea I'm on my second and final cider yeah so we're eating well we just had a little wander around part of the ring there's the tents over there had a little wander around part of the ring we went sort of that way around it so anti-clockwise and we come across the two other people that are camping they were I think they were asleep already they're already in their tents they've got two like little low profile tents set up really good spot they had actually it was really flat like lots of sort of flat space up sort of just just at the start of the inner tree tree line I was a little bit jealous actually but it was a lot windier there whereas it's really calm here there's no wind we're blocked from the the wind coming in off the sea whereas they've they've got the like a strong breeze around there but it does look pretty good although i think i think it means we're going to get the sunrise though round here which will be really good so that's going to be about quarter past six in the morning yeah but it's all good at the moment all good Okay, welcome back everyone. It's about 11 p.m. now. The rain has completely stopped. There's a slight breeze outside, but it's, it's not too bad. As I say, we're in a really sheltered little spot here with great views still. How is it in there? Really toasty. She's toasty. Got loads of room? Yeah. Oodles. Oodles of room. <laughs> not really that cold, to be honest. It's been a really good camp overall. We've been sat outside on the that dead tree, just admiring the views and chatting and finishing off our ciders. I've got a hot chocolate that I've just made on the OEX Takana stove. That's been working well actually. It's been really good. Boiling quickly. It's not setting fire to the 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 cosy uh, cover that goes round the pot. So yes, it's working well at the moment. It's got a new tin of gas on it. Unless anything of interest happens between now and then, maybe some of the ghosts of Chanctonbury Ring, who knows? We'll see what happens. But yeah, if nothing happens, we'll uh, speak to you in the morning. So we're going to try and get up for around 6am. Hopefully get a really good sunrise. Well, that's about all from us, so we'll chat to you more in the morning. 6 a.m. for the sunrise. This is good night from me. Good night, everyone. Night. Good night. See you in the morning, people.
morning everyone it's coming up to about 6 30 a.m and me and candice have just witnessed a biblical sunrise that was quite impressive and it literally came up right in front of the tents i slept really well i think candice slept well she said she had like a, a nightmare or I don't know, like a night terror or something it was her turn for once and i snored as well a couple of times but aside from that I think yeah we slept good and we were both on a little bit of a a slope sort of down towards the bottom of our tents and to one side but it wasn't too bad to be honest with you it was hardly noticeable once you're asleep that was it I was out like a light I had a really good night's sleep um, I've had a little bit of breakfast I'm going to have some more in a bit we just wanted to get up and, and see the sunrise really just done a tea and then get some more breakfast on the go. Here she is. Morning. Morning. Had a good time? It is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Um but yeah, other than that, yeah, tents held up really well. It's all been a, a success really. We had that that sort of spell of rain, quite heavy rain last night. Before we went to sleep but other than that it's it's been fine really we haven't seen or heard from the other two guys that were camping around the other side of the the hill fault just yet and we haven't seen anyone else coming up here behind us is the interior of the hill fault in amongst all those trees and i'm just going to wait for the light to get a bit better and then i'll go in there and have a little look around show you in there I think there's some interesting bits in there, more history as well. But how about that for a sunrise and a view? That's that's a good and that. Really good. I said to Candice last night, I went, Would you want to come back up here again? She went, Definitely. She didn't even hesitate. It was like, Yep. And I agree with her. I'd like to come back up here and try maybe the other side of the hill fault there's some really nice flat spots there but it's quite windy because you're facing out onto the sea um, I'd probably take maybe a tarp and a bivy or a different shelter of some sort just to sort of try different things out really not that there's anything wrong with a tent it's just I like to experiment you know otherwise it'd feel like I've done the same camp again way over that way out towards the sea near Finden is a Sisbury ring and that's another big ancient hill fault it's National Trust owned and we want a wild camp there as well so that's another plan I just want to do as many hill faults as I can I just want to find all the hill faults kind of within two hours drive of mine and try and spend at least one night up on top of each of them that is that's my that's one of my life goals I'm just boiling up some water on the OEX Takana stove I'm using the adjustable pot stand and it actually fits my little titanium mug so it will fit this pot which I think is a 750 mil pot or 650 mil I can never remember the two what one it is that's a 400 mil mug which is pretty good and it's got like a, a built-in windshield still and of course that's the, the pot it comes with the stove yeah we've been sort of sat here chatting we've seen a couple of runners go past uh, oh there's the runner over there in the distance that just ran past and said hello yeah he sodded off I think the two guys are still camped around there they're doing breakfast and then get this Candice went uh, to answer the call of nature earlier on and stumbled across a family uh, uh, what's it father mother daughter and two spaniels camping they just packed up and left and we sort of saw them earlier they sort of waved I think pretty cool that's empty by the way Candice is not starting early <laughs> bless her <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just uh, doing a green tea. I've already had a normal English breakfast tea. While that's going, I'm going to start packing up the interior of the tent. 
we packed everything up, cleared all the spot, leaving no trace. We've just got the remains of our stuff down here by the dead tree. I'm just drying out the footprint over there. I've hung it up to dry. The rubbish is in my rucksack. Candice is going to stay here for a little bit while I take you on a little tour inside the ring on the top of the hill fault. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the history. Shanktonbury Ring is in a commanding position looking across the Sussex Weald to the north on the edge of a steep natural escarpment to the northwest and northeast. It is at the middle point of a long, narrow and otherwise treeless plateau approached via ridges to the east and west. A trig point is located about 400 metres west of the ring recorded by the Ordnance Survey as 238 metres above sea level. Although this was originally recorded as the top of Chanctonbury Hill and thus the Marilyn Summit, recent measurements suggest that the area of the ring is higher, about 241 metres above sea level. The ring lies just to the north of an ancient ridgeway which has been in use since prehistoric times and is now part of the South Downs Way. The hill fault is roughly circular, enclosing about 3.7 acres. The bank around the enclosure is about 33 feet wide and up to 2 feet 7 inches high, with a circumference of about 1,300 foot. It is surrounded by a ditch approximately 26 feet wide and 2 foot four inches deep. The bank was constructed from chalk rubble, flint and clay excavated from its surrounding ditch. They would originally have been much wider and deeper and would have had prominent lines of sight to other prehistoric landmarks in the area. The fault is defined by archaeologists as a slight univallate hill fault indicating a single walled earthwork with a low rampart. The original entrance to the hill fall was provided by a gap of approximately 20 feet on the southeastern side where the remains of a causeway are visible. Another gap through the rampart is visible on the southwestern side but was probably created much later after the hill fall had gone out of use as no causeway is visible there. The rampart and outer ditch have largely been preserved on the southern side though slightly damaged by two small quarries dug into it. Erosion and soil creep have reduced the earthworks on the northern side and only traces remain of the ditch in this area. The perimeter and interior of the hill fault are occupied by a planted stand of beech trees. Chanctonbury Ring was investigated by archaeologists in excavations carried out in 1869, 1909 1977 and 1988 to 1991. Evidence for human activity in the Neolithic and Early Bronze Age has been found, but not settlement or occupation. The finds consisted of tools likely to have been used for exploiting woodland. The construction of a number of barrows on the top of Chanctonbury Hill suggests that the hilltop was seen as an area of special significance, perhaps because of its high visibility. It is conceivable that the domed summit now occupied by Chanctonbury Ring was used as a site for ritual activity on account of its prominent position along the South Downs Ridgeway. If so, it is conceivable that the stone tools found on the site predating the hillfall may have been intended as ritual depositions. The hill fault was initially thought to have been built and initially occupied during the early Iron Age, around the 6th to the 4th centuries BC. Dating evidence as provided by pottery shards and refuse pits. An animal bone found on the site was dated through radiocarbon dating to around 370 BC. However, later analysis of pottery finds suggests that its origins are significantly older and may date to the Late Bronze Age or around the 7th century BC. 
The ring appears to have been abandoned sometime around the mid 4th century BC, but was possibly in only intermittent usage before then. The reason for its abandonment is unknown, but might be linked to the construction of the much larger hillfall at Sisbury Ring a few miles away, which may have taken over some of the functions of the much older Chanctonbury Ring. The site's original purpose is unclear. Despite the martial connotations of the term hillfall, such places were used for a wide variety of purposes, including stock enclosures, redistribution centres, places of refuge and permanent settlements. Structures were often erected within their perimeter, such as houses, storage pits and probably raised granaries. However, archaeological evidence is lacking for the existence of such structures within Chanterbury Ring, which would have been in an extremely exposed and windswept spot. One possibility is that it may have been used as a centre for religious activity. Around 500 years after its initial abandonment, Chanctonbury Ring was reused as a religious site from the mid 1st century AD. At least two Romano Celtic temples were built in the interior, probably some time during the 2nd century, while the bank and ditch were reused to form a Terminus or sacred precinct. The remains of the temple survive principally as buried wall footings of mortared flint rubble. They are located only a few centimetres below the ground but are not visible on the surface. The larger of the two known temples was constructed on a west-east alignment in the centre of the fault at the highest point on the site. It had a rectangular central cellar or inner chamber measuring about 9 metres by 7 metres. An ambulatory or enclosed covered walkway enclosed it on the west, north and east sides and was paved with a round chalk floor around 3 metres wide. The ambulatory's external wall was covered with red painted plaster. The building was entered from the east, aligning it with the original entrance to the hillfall. A small rectangular structure stood about 5 metres from the northeast corner of the temple. Constructed on a north-northeast, south-southwest axis, it measured about 3 metres by 1 metre. This has been interpreted as an oven or furnace. A large circular rubbish pit was constructed nearby. It has provided a variety of datable finds, including roof tile fragments, window glass, oyster shells, pottery shards and coins, analysis of which has shown that the temple was in use during an approximately 350 year long period from the mid 1st to the late 4th centuries AD. It is not known which deity the temple was dedicated to. A second temple was located around 30 metres southwest of the first. Its remains are much more fragmentary as it appears to have been dismantled after falling out of use. It appears to have had a polygonal shape measuring about 8 metres on each side with a rectangular annex on the eastern side which had a floor made of tessellated green sand cubes. The temple may have been dedicated to a boar cult judging from the discovery of numerous bone fragments from the heads and jaws of pigs. It is not known why the Roman temples were built on the site, but there are several examples elsewhere. It is not known why the Roman temples were built on the site, but there are examples elsewhere of the Romans building on the site of Iron Age temples or shrines. However, it is more difficult to argue for this being the case at Chanctonbury Ring, given the gap of half a millennium between the hillfall's abandonment and reoccupation. In other locations, such as at Hailing Island and Maiden Castle, there was a continuity of religious use between Iron Age and Roman times, which was clearly not the case with Chanctonbury. The hill fault's rampart may have been refurbished when it was reoccupied, and at least one of the two nearby dikes was probably also constructed during the Roman period. 
The excavation of 1909 also reportedly found the remains of a curious pear-shaped structure, but subsequent archaeological investigations have revealed no evidence of it. The site is linked via a Roman terraceway on the north face of Chanctonbury Hill to the Sussex Green Sand Way, which runs parallel to the northern escarpment of the Downs. After its abandonment, Chanctonbury Ring appears to have been left unoccupied and unused throughout the late Roman, medieval and early modern periods. The site lies within the estate of the Goring family of Whiston House, who have been prominent landowners for centuries. The ring of beech trees that gave it its fame was first planted in 1760 by Charles Goring around and just inside the ramparts. At the age of 16 he decided to beautify the site by planting it with trees, though the interior was left open at the time. He was said to have carried water up the hill each time he visited to water his trees, though some versions of the story say that he had his footman climb the hill each day with buckets of water. His successors have continued to replant the trees ever since and have ensured that the fault remains a prominent landmark on the crest of the South Downs. In 1909 the Gorings decided that they would also plant trees in the fort's interior. Large quantities of Romano-British pottery and building rubble were discovered during preparations for planting, prompting the first archaeological excavation of the hill fall. The two temples and a large number of artefacts were discovered. However, the planting has caused damage to the archaeology within the hill fault due to disturbances caused by tree roots. Further damage was sustained through quarrying and the hill fault's use during World War II as an anti-aircraft gun position when four gun emplacements were constructed within its perimeter. Damage was also caused by World War II training activities including the digging of practice slit trenches and rubbish pits on the site. Chantonbury Ring was fenced off for a number of years after 1950 when the then owner surrounded it with barbed wire and erected a large iron water tank for cattle. This prompted controversy for blocking rights of way and harming the view and was eventually removed. In 1977 the Goring estate set about replanting areas of the ring to replace trees which were at the end of their natural lifespan. This provided West Sussex County Council with an opportunity to carry out a further archaeological investigation of the site which was accomplished during July and August of that year. The Great Storm of 1987 destroyed over 75% of the trees. It was decided to replant the ring and to take a fresh opportunity to investigate the ring's archaeology. Further archaeological investigations took place between 1987 and 1991, which led to a reassessment of earlier findings and a redating of the Hillfort's construction to an earlier period. Local legend has it that Chanctonbury Ring was created by the devil and that he can be summoned by running around the clump of trees seven times anti-clockwise. When he appears, he will offer you a bowl of soup in exchange for your soul. Frank R. Williams, writing in the Sussex Notes and Queries in 1944, argued that the story derives from ancient pagan worship, which would include a ritual dance ceremony followed by a sacrificial feast. The association with Chanctonbury derives from an earlier pagan site on the land. The story is widely known orally with variations, such as the devil offering porridge or milk instead of soup, but may be of relatively recent origins, with its first known appearance in print dating to Arthur Beckett's 1909 book, The Spirit of the Downs. The occultists Alistair Crowley and his associate Victor Nurberg, who lived in Stenning two miles away from Chanctonbury Ring, were reportedly convinced that the site was a place of power for its pre-Christian religious significance. It is unclear whether they actually visited it, but Nurberg published poems about the supposed mystic power of the site 
and imagined gruesome druidic sacrifices taking place there. The travel and nature writer Robert McFarlane gives an account of sleeping out on Chanctonbury Ring one summer night. It is an unsettling account of an interrupted night's sleep where he was awoken by an unearthly screaming at 2am. The account is recorded in his best-selling book The Old Ways, A Journey by Foot. It is followed by an account of his research into the folklore of Chanctonbury Ring. The ring is also claimed to increase fertility in women who sleep underneath the trees for one night. Watch out Candice. Well there we go everyone, that was just a quick little look round Chanctonbury Ring and the history of it. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry if I bored you and waffled on a bit but that was uh, pretty cool. Looking forward to having a look at that. So I'm just waiting for the the footprint of the Helm 1 to dry out a bit. I think everything else is dry. We're all packed up and yeah we're ready to go. Is it dry? Oh okay, right, so yeah, we'll be on our way back down soon, so I probably won't film that, I'll probably just bring you back when we're back at the car. Okay, we're heading off, goodbye Chanctonbury Ring, we will return at some point, definitely. Amazing place, absolutely amazing. Very popular. It is very popular, we've seen a lot of people out and about. Very unique looking hill fault as well, with the the tree ring and stuff. Yeah, incredible. Right, we've got to head back down that way. There's two possible routes. There's the one that goes straight that way on the South Downs Way, or there's one over here that could be quicker, but we've not done it before. We might give that one a try. See how we go. There's Dora the Explorer. Right. Enough talking, let's get walking. I should really help. <laughs> that might come for some of people. Bless her. <laughs> yeah. I adore you. I adore you too. Aww. I knew you were going to do that. I know. As soon as I saw it and you put your leg over, <laughs> you're going to film that. Yeah. I'm a terrible boyfriend. Okay, we've made it back down to the car. Chanctonbury Ring is up there behind us. We've conquered it. We've done it. Excellent. Yeah. Well done, you. I want to say a big thank you to Candice. Well done. Thank you. Cheers. And uh, yeah, that's the end of this video. Candice is now going to go and treat me to a second breakfast. And we're going to head on home. So that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed all the history and stuff. Get in the comments, say well done Candice for, for <laughs> doing that, because that was tough. It was tough getting down actually. That route yeah. that we took, was 45 minutes, it was about the same time it took to do the main route, except the route we took this time coming down was like down climbing down the side of the hill and that was quite treacherous in places. Candice went over a couple of times, she's got half the forest on her bum. But not to worry, we're, we're both safe and that. So yeah, no, it was good fun. So thank you very much for watching, get in the comments, let us know what you think. Until next time, take care of each other, stay safe, get out there and explore people. Cheers, see you soon, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.